Hey guys, it's going to be a new video in my Nomad Sculpt Basics tutorial series where I'm going to go a little bit more in depth over making your own custom brushes and textures and how using the same alpha for the brush, you can apply it to different tools and get very different effects. And so kind of go over different how those different tools affect that alpha, how you can apply different settings to those to really make sure you get the effect that you're looking for with your brush, kind of fine tuning those settings and playing around with those. So hopefully this is helpful and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. So in my previous video, I went over how I create new alphas and import them in to make new brush textures. So all of these are what you call alphas. And these are what these little black and white images are what you're using to create new brush textures. So this is a brush. Let's see. The scale is a brush that I use all the time. And so first I'm going to go through these different tools and show you how that brush looks on the different tools. So normally, so like, let's start with our clay and what I would do for the scale brush. Let's choose my scale alpha like that. And at first you might lay it down and be like, oh, this looks like nothing, right? So what you would want to do is you could go into your brush settings and go to your stroke setting right there and up the spacing a lot. Normally, I tend to go between 1 and 200 is about the spacing that I need for my brushes or lower. Let's see. And see, now you get a brush that's kind of laying out more naturally how you would want those scales. And of course, see how we're getting a little bit of, you know, kind of pixelation there. You can go in and subdivide this sphere as well, which is going to make that brush look much better and much better detail. See? So that's one way to affect that brush. Go over here, fall off. It's going to change how much depth this brush affects. So going to fall off right here, we have a big wide white circle. So this fall off setting is going to give us a pretty even you know, impression of the scale all around. So if we go to this one, see how it's higher in the middle there, more white? That means it's going to have more fading over the edges here and more pulling out in the middle, which gives you a little bit of a softer look. And this one is going to be a little bit of a mix between the two where it's going to have a softer all overall look where it fades in a little bit better and it's not as obvious as this guy here. So that's with the clay. We'll go over to the brush, add our scale alpha. And again, let's go to stroke. Let's up that. We're getting a very different effect with the brush than we were with the clay. The clay is a little bit more of a gentler impression, whereas the brush pulls and pushes a lot more drastically. And so even with the same fall off, we're getting a very different effect. Then we can go here and get change those new fall offs and again you're going to have that more faded out on the edges pulled up in the middle and then this one is going to be more of a softer than how drastic these are pulled out another good thing to play around with is your stroke so these are dots dot setting right now and then you have roll which is going to kind of roll those pieces over each other a little bit differently depending on what surface you're on Tile is also going to kind of splice it up, that brush, to where it's divided in places. And then the lock radius is another good one that I use a lot, which means you're going to tap and pull, and that's where you're going to get your scale. So if I want really precise placement for my scales, I'll use that brush setting. So I can really just place each individual scale like that. And then lock intensity is going to be, it's going to stay the same size, but then you can pull up or down to make that deeper or shallower. And those settings are going to be with pretty much any of the brush types that I'm going to show y'all. You can play around with those. So moving along to our move tool, we're going to go down to the same alpha again. And immediately this is going to give us a very different effect. So see how now we can kind of push and pull the clay in that particular shape which depending on what angle you're doing that at can give you a lot of different effects. Another setting that I like to do with the move and drag tools, I'll push it to normal like this, which makes it 
a little bit more of a defined shape, staying with that alpha shape versus pushing and pulling as much. But like you can lay in this scale and then basically pull or pull it as much as you want. Like look at how much, how deep you can make that. So that is really fun for a lot of effects. And the drag is going to act a little more, a little similarly where you kind of being, you're going to be able to grab and pull out that shape. And then you have different effects with your scaling and your stroke. You can do grab. And that's going to give you more of that move tool effect again. And then the lock radius for the move and drag is going to give you the scale with the same depth. But then you can make it larger or smaller and affect that in different ways. So there's that one. Smooth tool. I don't play with the alphas on that because it's all going to do the same thing. Right. The flatten is another one that I don't mess with the brush settings on. I just keep it as the basic one because I'm just smoothing and flattening things with that and not making impressions and textures. The planar is an interesting one that I don't play with a lot because it's a little bit unpredictable, but so you can kind of go and make these really deep divots with the planar, which is interesting. But you can see it kind of stays within that shape that you had, but I don't use that one that much. Another good one is the layer tool, which is going to make these really long, large, thick impressions of that alpha. But it's gonna be a much more abrupt, tall separation between the flat layer and adding this other layer than any of the other tools. And then the crease tool is another one that I don't tend to play with the bra alpha brush on it. The inflate. So you see, so you can kind of build up that texture with the inflate. It's not going to make as drastic of a stark impression of that shape, but it will kind of build up those textures. And then the stamp is another good one where it's basically going to do similar to that lock radius setting. No matter what brush you get. And you can go in here, lock intensity, where it's going to add that, keep the radius, but then pull it in and out. So the different tools that I turn into brushes most often for my sculpts is going to be the stamp tool, the drag tool, and the clay and brush tools. So the stamp tool I like to use for adding a lot of texture over a large variety of area that I can kind of layer over each other organically like that. Either that or then the stamp tool is really nice for getting really clean precision for adding in singular objects and textures and feathers, scales, things like that. Setting to go in with like scales for overall dragons, things like that, where I want to add that variation, but all over texture. The clay brush setting I have here also is set to that lock radius. And this is actually like a wood grain texture that is really neat. So that lock radius Setting is also really good for laying in large areas that you want that texture on. Like this is a cobblestone that you can just expand and apply over that whole area without having to add in, you know, each individual little stone. And then now you have the clay with the dot. So if you want a line of those feathers, and then if you want, I have the drag with a lot of my fur textures because I'll add I like to be able to pull these out in more organic shapes and kind of play with adding that fur texture in a way that doesn't necessarily look like a stamp so that can give you some really cool effects there so yeah you can get a lot of different effects even with using that same alpha and really my best advice is to go in you know load in your alphas and then just play around with the different settings. Play around with the scaling, the rotation. You know, you can do tiling. You know, play around with that stroke spacing. All sorts of different things. To really just play around and see the different effects that you can get with that alpha texture and what you want to see. And there's really, you know, 
no better way to figure that out than to just try different things and test out things and try new settings and just play around with all these brush settings and just see what each thing does. So they help familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with that process. But yeah, that should help you have a little bit of an idea of what some of the different brushes do and how they can affect your different alpha textures and what settings to kind of get started with looking into. So hopefully that is helpful and I'll talk to you later.